Orfe is a powerhouse performer who is back on the forge in the new musical based on the well-loved rom-com Pretty Woman. Hear the Tony-nominated star talk about hitting Rodeo Drive with hubby Andy Carl in this splashy new show, her now iconic turn as Paula in Legally Blonde, and how Broadway became a surprise replacement dream for pop stardom on this week's show, People. Orfe, hey. so good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Looking fantastic. Why, thank you. Better thank than you. ever. Thank you. What's your secret? Good clean living and good, good jeans. You know my mother. Oh, yeah. So that's yes, the I met your mother. Actually, you're right. Yeah. You're right. The jeans it's are really, strong. It's honestly genetics, 80% genetics and 20% the way I've maintained. You are in Pretty Woman, The Musical. Pretty you gotta Woman. say The Musical. The Musical, sure. yes. This, this was a movie. There's also Pretty Woman, The Movie. Yeah, it only, People know it it. only grossed about $500 million. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, don't it's think like one of the most successful yeah. romantic comedies ever. ever. Yeah. Right. And I went the other night and it's packed. I mean, first of all, packed. like the audience was packed with a lot of women. Like it was like kind of like the target Broadway audience. Absolutely. Like, this is kind of like their show. The, the target actual uh, ticket buying, record yeah. buying audience. It's yeah. always, I knew that from back in the music business yeah. days. If you've got the women, uh -huh. you're a hit. Yeah. yeah, if you get women in their 50s and 60s, you're golden. Or no, even from just 13 on. Just women. If you get the just girls, women. That's, that's, Girl power. that's the ticket. Pretty women. Yeah, pretty women for pretty women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having fun? I'm having a blast, yeah. But we're in rehearsal all day. We're at the theater all day. We do the shows at night. We come back the next day and do yeah. it again. Up to opening night, yeah. that, that's what it's like yes, to be in a Broadway yes, show. Absolutely. I mean, it's really just like constant work. People just see the end result and they go, oh, that's so much fun. They don't really realize. I mean, I've been with this for two plus years. Yeah. So, you know. So Jerry Mitchell is your director choreographer. Indeed. And of course, he also worked with you and your Tony nominated performance in Legally, Legally Blonde. Blonde. And I actually saw Jerry like a year ago or so, I guess when you were working on it. Right. And, and I remember, he's like, the minute I heard the song Rodeo Drive, <laughs> I had to have, a, I said, that's Orfe, Orfe has to do that. And if Rodeo Drive is one of your, one of your songs it in the is, show. It is, it yeah. is, yeah. Brian Adams and his writing partner, Jim Valance, Valance that, yep. Yep, wrote the score. Yep. And I immediately thought, well, you must be excited as a real <laughs> rock and roll girl that you're working with Brian Adams. Nothing could be better. Seriously, like, can you imagine you grow up and you wind up doing a Broadway musical right. with one of your childhood music idols. Right. That like, I, I've told this story, but I would sit in my bedroom. I mean, what if you could call it a bedroom, it was a closet um, with a bed. <laughs> I would City sit childhood. there, New York City childhood. <laughs> I would sit there and practice on my rickety guitar, the dun, 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 mm -hmm. but my first real six string. And you like keep going. now, you could sing the whole song. Yeah, I, I could sing. I could yeah. sing all of Brian's Summer songs, and he knows it because I drive him crazy. I'm I'm always running up in his face and going, <laughs> Brian Adams. <laughs> like you know that clip of him and Tina Turner. You just did that, and I heard Celtic Moods. It was basically Celtic Moods. Yeah, yeah, I guess I got it from Tina Turner. That's now I know where that came from. <laughs> but uh, I always run up on him, and I'm constantly singing his songs to him, and I'm like, we got to do a cover of that. I drive him crazy. It's oh hilarious. But yeah, to get to now work with him yeah. and sing songs that he spe well, he didn't specifically knowingly wrote that song for yeah, me. Yeah. But Jerry Mitchell brought the marriage of that together. Mm -hmm. And when they called him and said, uh, "Here's this song, Rodeo Drive," Jerry literally like stopped everything. He's like, "Just, just stop. Everybody, just stop." I know who's going to sing this song, and there's nobody else who can sing this song, and I'm getting her on the phone. And that was basically, <laughs> honestly, how it happened. That's wow. honestly how I got this part. Well, your voice, I mean, you don't forget your voice. <laughs> that could be a good or bad thing, but yeah, well, it's no, a little different. No, it's a different. fantastic thing. <laughs> and there's a term, like a Broadway term, the park and bark, right? Like the roles. Some roles are called like park and bark. You look like a strut and bark. Do I do a strut yeah, and bark? Yeah, I love it when, I love it when Who in knew? the first number The things number I of, learn on show people. I love in the first number of, of Pretty Woman. You have like <laughs> a bottle of booze and you're like pouring the drinks for the people. And <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> and you're singing your face off. I mean, that's another term everyone says. Singing your face off. Oh dear. I mean, I, I just, I love that sound so much. Thank you, I, I mean, appreciate it. It warms me, I yes. love it. I've heard it's an acquired taste. <laughs> What does that mean? That like uh, it means the legit shady. Broadway. No, it's just, it's just just someone being shady. <laughs> no shade here. Yeah, There's exactly. No shade coming from this side. <laughs> oh, no, I know that. No, no, we're good. We're good. And so this character, yes. Kit DeLuca, 
it was played by Laura Sandra Como yes. in the movie, yes. and I remember loving her in it. And she everybody some, loved her. In she it. has some great lines, Absolutely. and you know, she's the hilarious friend. Is it fun to play this character? And what are you loving about her? First of all, yes, it's a lot of fun playing this character. And you look fantastic, by the well, way. Well, thank you the, very the, much. The, that that I mean, we owe to that we owe to Josh Marquette and Greg Barnes. Yes. They they and actually Jerry Mitchell because Jerry Mitchell kept telling. Greg Barnes and Josh Marquette. Costume I, designer and hair Costume designer, designer yeah. and I say it like you know, but yeah, I think you know. all know, the fans know, they know. Uh, who these guys are. And I worked with Greg on Legally Blonde and I worked with Josh on the Great American Trailer Park. Oh, Pippi. Fun fact, Pippi, Pippi he invented stripper. Pippi. Another working yeah, girl of a different another kind. Another kind of working girl, <laughs> she was working a lot. And um, Jerry kept saying, I want Kit to have Orfe style. So what you see again is thanks to Jerry Mitchell. He was like, marry that, marry that. What she comes into rehearsal with. I want it to be like yeah. that. Her hair, the way she shaved on one side, you know. Most people don't even know I'm wearing a wig. Isn't there some crimping in that, in that wig There too? is some crimping. There's like a crimp moment. I had a crimping iron. It could have happened. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> was this a big movie for you when it came out? I mean, it came out, what, in 90? It came out in 90. I don't remember. It's funny. I'm really big about knowing when I saw movies. I don't remember the first time I actually saw Pretty Woman, but I remember I that. Do. Everyone was flipping out about it. Oh, it, it was out. a complete. It was. Uh, the it girls was like, I went to college with were like, like one of my best friends was obsessed with it. We were all obsessed with it. I remember very specifically. I grew up in Murray Hill, yeah. and there was a, a big, very highly frequented movie theater on Thirty Fourth, where uh -huh. I have at some point or another sat next to Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Tom Cruise, you name it, they all went to this okay. movie theater. Uh -huh. So I'd always sneak in at a matinee. I, I used to love to go to the movies alone. It was like my decompression meditation thing. Uh -huh. I can't sit in a dark, hot meditation room. That was it. Yeah. So I'd always wind up and I'd look to my side and I'd be like, oh my God, it's Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. <laughs> I could have put on a little lip gloss, you know? <laughs> just. But we all, I remember very specifically going to the movies yeah. with a group of my friends and we just lost it. We were like, oh my God, we all wanted to be discovered by Gary Marshall and wind up being a yeah. big megawatt movie star like Julia Roberts. Yeah. We all fell in love with Richard Gere. And it was just one of those movies that became an instant phenomenon because it was so incredibly charming. Mm -hmm. And Gary Marshall had this amazing knack for casting. And he just, it just, I mean, it was flawless. Now it's a condo, that movie theater. A it's big a high rise condo. That's what but happened. all the best That's movies, all my best memories of going to the movies are from that theater. I walk around New York City and it's just condos. It's shocking, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You met Julia Roberts. I did. How was that? She came to see the show. <laughs> Julia Roberts came to one of our early previews. Yeah, it was, and it was like a special, it was like it was honoring a, Gary Marshall. It was a special event honoring Gary Marshall. Did you get to meet Gary Marshall? I knew Gary Marshall knew and Gary, Andy and I, worked with him. I know him. your husband worked with him yes. on the Happy Days musical. He did and okay. he was very, the whole Marshall family is very supportive, has been very supportive of Andy's career. They've uh -huh. gone to every musical he's been in and the very first half act table read that Ellen Marsh and I did years ago, Gary moment. was still there Yeah, and he was still with us. Yeah, and, it was uh, his dream for this to be It was his a dream. Musical. This yeah. was one of his big, big passion projects. He's been working on getting this to the stage for a long time. Yeah. And we were very lucky enough to get to be with yeah. him and talk to him and have fun with him. My God, he was just as funny as you ever wished he w he was, which leads me back to Julia Roberts. She is every inch the movie She's star. She's really charming. But the thing about her, she was so genuinely moved and took time to speak to every single person in the cast one on one and hold them wow. and look at them like this. I, I really admire and appreciate people mm. who can do this yeah. rather than like, oh, who's right. who's the more who's interesting you, person yeah. coming into the room that I need to go and right. talk to, huh? Right. Yeah, I can't stand that. Yeah. And she was just here and had something wonderful to say to everyone that she wasn't just pulling out of the air. Uh -huh. She was like, and you did this. And then when you did that, wow. it was amazing. She spent so much time with us. Samantha didn't know she was there. Oh. We all knew she was there and Samantha didn't know she was there. And when she found out the, the reaction that Samantha had, knowing that Julia had been Losing in the audience, mind. Julia, my buddy, Julia, um, <laughs> we're on a first name basis, was in the audience was priceless. It was just worth the price of admission alone. Wow. It was fantastic. You're, of course just you're glorious. Samantha Barks, who, yes. who's playing the role of Vivian. Vivian. And, uh, there's this new guy playing the role of Edward. Yeah, he's got to really find his way in this yeah. role. <laughs> his name is Andy Carl. Andy Carl! And we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk more about him. And we 
are back with Orfe. Just one word, one name, it's all you need. <laughs> and a fantastic husband. Yes. Mr. Andy Carl. Indeed. Yes. So look at you two back together again, I know. again in a Broadway it's show. It's unbelievable. In a Jerry Mitchell production. In a Jerry Mitchell. Of yeah. course, he was Kyle to your Paulette he in was Legally Kyle Blonde. To my that time you were falling in love every night. <laughs> we were. This time it's different. <laughs> this, this time, time you don't even really see him until the curtain call. We literally, I look back at him for about four seconds uh -huh. and then I don't see him again until the curtain call. Because he is making Vivian, Samantha Barks, fall in love with him. Absolutely. Uh, that, that, there's a whole other thing happening. Whole other thing, <laughs> yep. He's not with me, he is with Vivian slash Samantha. Now you seem super cool about this. You know, and it's so funny because it's kind of ridiculous, but it's such a common thing to talk about when you're talking to actors who are married to each other. It shows like, you know, like you hear about movie stars, like, well, do you go on the set when he's doing love scenes? You know, like you always hear things like that. And you just are so chill about it. So where does that come from? I mean, you, is it just you have so much security in your relationship and in yourself? And I mean, look, I wouldn't have married Andy and spent the last 17 years of my life with him. 17 years. You're 17 up to 17 years. years. Which in showbiz years is probably right. 107. Right. It's like dog years, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't think I would have spent this much time with him if there wasn't a tremendous amount of trust. Right. I've also been married to him a long time, so there are certain things that don't phase a long married couple. And I love and trust Samantha. So mm -hmm. there's no shenanigans right. going on. And honestly, I'm in the wings with Tommy Brocco and Eric Anderson when they're doing their big piano love making. Yes, scene. there's love making in this show. There is. Get into it and get used to it. So, <laughs> and we're literally, our entrance is seconds after the piano yes. goes off. Yes. And I have to be reminded that that's going on behind me because <laughs> we're so busy just catching up and chatting and having a good time yeah. and like, you know, gossiping about whatever right. that it's, I, I, I'll catch, you know, I'll look this way because I know I have to enter and it's dark. And suddenly I'm like, oh yeah, okay, so yeah, they're naked on the piano having, you know, some kind of simulated sex. I think people will forgive me for saying this, but my defining characteristic trait in life as a human being is I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I just am cool. Mm -hmm. And so things that yeah. might phase other people mm -hmm. generally don't phase me. It doesn't mean I'm cold. It means that there are mm -hmm. things I would rather waste my crazy on mm -hmm. than that. Right. And again, we're in a professional environment with professional group of very good actors. And what am I gonna get upset about? You know, you are super cool, but what I love about your relationship with Andy is you're such a fan of his. I'm his biggest fan on God's No, Peter. I know. And, and you know, knowing that you didn't really grow up as like a Broadway super fan, it was so adorable last year <laughs> to watch what a super fan you turned into about Groundhog Day. Oh my God. But I mean, you, <laughs> I feel like you I were still don't even bring it up. I start to like have a slowly I turned moment. He, I mean, listen, yes, of course people are gonna say, well, of course she has to think that it's like your mother telling you you're good looking. Right, of course your right, mother right, has right. to. But when I say what I say or feel the way I feel about Andy, it's because he is one of the most gifted, brilliant actors I have ever had the good fortune of seeing. And if you didn't know that before Groundhog Day, and you saw Groundhog right. Day, and you don't think that, right. then then I can't help you. Right. Because it <laughs> right. was one of the most tour de force performances I have ever seen anybody give yeah. in my life. Yeah. And I don't think there's another soul that could do that role that way. Right. You know, I'm sure there are other people who could bring their own bend and slant to it. Bend and slant. <laughs> <laughs> but he's brilliant. Yeah, he's brilliant, brilliant and he's a good person. Mm -hmm. What else is there? When you fell for him back, way back during Saturday Night Fever, a great show by the way. Great I, show. I, no, I mean, I'm not joking. No, really, it was a, really an like amazing show. show. Should have run 10 years. Yeah, but were you attracted to obviously his good looks, yeah, well, his personality, his height? But, what, but were you, even though he was doing like a small role in the show, was it also the talent, or did it later were you like, oh my God, this guy like has? Have you seen him grow too? I'm sure. No, I mean I've certainly seen him grow. We were so much younger then, but yeah. he was instantly amazing. He learned the whole show in seven days or something, and he had the whole you know John Travolta thing down. Yeah. I'm like, look at this great looking character actor. How, how does that happen, yeah. you know? So yeah, I instantly knew how gifted he was. I mean, I've, I've been very lucky. I've worked with very many gifted people, Andy being the top of that. 
he's also super cool. Super and, cool. And chill about like work and you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, he took on this lead. I mean, he was not in the show and it was out he of was town. He was not in the show. He took on the lead. Jerry uh, Mitchell for called him and said things happen that, you know, you don't anticipate. And yeah. Steve Kazee yeah. couldn't go on with the show. And uh, Andy's pilot literally in that moment didn't get picked up, which was supposed to go. It was yeah. like almost practically a given green light. Yeah. And it didn't. Jerry called Andy. I was sitting there and we we're like, well, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're working with family. You're working with me. You're working with Jerry. You're doing this amazing music. Oh, and you happen to be a gigantic Brian Adams fan, and you'll be singing his songs. No brainer. Yeah. Really, no and, brainer. And his voice sounds great singing the songs too. Yeah, it's it's perfect. It's like the most perfect match that yeah. he's gotten to have in a probably in my time hearing him sing in musicals. This yeah. is the best fit. Yeah. When you go to the stage door, I see a lot of your photos on social media of you with the fans and. Do you meet uh, Paulettes? Do you meet uh, Legally Blonde Paulettes? That's all I meet. I mean, I feel like- That's all I hear? Uh, it's all That's Paulette. all I meet? I mean, they do enjoy Kit, and they'll say wonderful things yeah. about Kit, but most of their opening lines is, Legally Blonde changed my life. I'm in musical theater because amazing? of your part in, you know, Legally yeah. Blonde. I played Paulette here. I played Paulette here. I just played Paul. I see it on Twitter all the time. Mm -hmm. I get it at the stage door all the time. Occasionally be like, I played Vivian in, in uh, Legally Blonde. Yeah. I played so-and-so. But right, it, right. It, their opening line, and it, especially in Chicago, uh -huh. everyone had a major kind of love and affection and connection to Paulette. So. Yeah. And it's done in schools and it's done everywhere. everywhere. I mean, it, I feel like it's like ahead of its time, I think. I mean, it ran for like a year and a half. But hey, everyone, it did not even get nominated for Best Musical that year. You know, Neither people, did Saturday Night Fever. For the Tony Awards I'm talking about. I mean, it's crazy when you, when you think you about that. You know what? I, I think, again, it's like when they say luck doesn't exist. Luck does exist and good timing is everything. Yeah. And sometimes being ahead of your time only matters years later when people go, oh, that was really ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. Legally Blonde is just about as close to a perfect musical as you can get. Yeah. You know? Well, and that cast album. I mean, and all of it. But when, you, when you're on a cast album, I can't wait for my Pretty Woman album because this is gonna I, mean, be fun. When you're, I mean, the, the then, then Snap and the Ireland and the Ireland Reprieve and the Legally Blonde. I mean, come on. I know that album by heart. By oh, heart. gosh. But you know, it's funny, I was looking back and you actually were in one of the first popular movie turned into musicals, Footloose. Yep. That really was like one of the first of that yes. genre that everyone does all the time now, all using the, time. the soundtrack. And that was when you were like, Broadway was never the dream, never part of it. It wasn't even that it wasn't the dream. It wasn't even on my radar. Right. At all. Right. You know, I'm and a city just, kid. And we it didn't... happened because you were coming off your recording career, looking yes. up on YouTube or yeah. and more. <laughs> or and Every more. other day, one word. Uh, yeah, you were coming off that. <laughs> Not a lost hit. You can't be lost if it still exists. What do you mean a lost hit? Is People that a call term? it a lost hit of the 90s. Oh, the, oh lost hit. It can't be lost if it was a hit. Oh. You see, so the whole term is ridiculous. But yeah, Stop we joke about it. Stop saying it, everyone. It's not a lost hit. It was a hit. All Top right. 40 with a bullet on the Hot 100 when people actually still went and bought records. Yeah. Okay. But AC... Ciula, Ciula yeah. was, was choreographing Footloose. It was a big moment for him. Yes, and huge he, moment. he somehow brought you into this Broadway world. Well, it's very, 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 very bizarre. Um, AC and David Marquez yeah. were two of my lead male dancers in my troupe of dancers in my recording career, right. more and more. They were the two lead male dancers. Right. We went everywhere together. They were in the videos. We traveled the world. Yeah. And they both wound up choreographing Broadway shows. Right, that oddly. was the next. Like, and they, they had been in. It wasn't something they saw coming. Well, probably. no. And they were like, if you saw a big music video on MTV, any time, any, literally from the late 80s to the mid, you know, yeah. 90s, either AC or David were, were in the video. Right. CNC Music Factory, Snap, you, right. you name it, right, they were right, in the right, video. Right. And somehow they got into these careers and AC called me up one day and he's like, hey, I'm choreographing Footloose, you wanna come audition, they need a swing. Right. He might as well have been speaking a foreign language to me. I needed clarity on everything like, he had just said. I said, I don't know what that means, I don't know what that means, and what do you mean there? What do you mean you're choreographing Footloose? Right. The movie? Right. He's like, no, 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 and, and he had to like take me through it. So I um, showed up for my audition in, um, Combat boots, overalls, and a, and a tank top with a hat. Which, by the way, is a good look for you. Uh, not in that room. It was not good. <laughs> um, and uh, he was like, bring your book. 
And I thought he meant to bring a book to read in the waiting room. <laughs> no idea. And what book did you bring? I, I brought my Mariah Carey Unplugged. Oh. That was, and I, I sang songs from that book for a good six years of auditions. And every right. time I did, I booked it. And then somebody said, you have to stop singing that song. Big mistake. Big, huge. <laughs> I'm going back to Mariah now. Um, yeah. So I got the job as the swing right. for all the female leads except for Ariel. So I, Janine Myers and I understudied, and she did understudy Ariel. Uh -huh. We understudied Ariel, Betty Blast, uh, Rusty, uh, Erlene. Right. We, we had all, the two of us did all of the female right. leads. Right. Except for the adults. Right. So... <laughs> That's how I got into and Broadway. And suddenly you were and, on Broadway. Well, and then David Marquez choreographed Fascinating Rhythm. Uh, that's a good point for a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Orbe. We are back with Orfe. You know, Orfe, I love a, a flop. I love a Broadway flop. And what a flop it and was. Fascinating Rhythm was a flop. What but a flop. It was the first time I saw you. I, a lot of people and was you, the first clap, time they saw clap, me. Clap your hands, clap right? Clap your hands, yeah, yeah. clap your thighs. And then weren't you like a, I want to say you were like a working girl in another number maybe? Or you were like Adrian a, Lennox and I were. You were I, like I, a saucy. Pretty much I may have made a career of playing working girls apparently. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Some things uh, never change. But the cast of that show was, was legendary. It. Legendary. Sara Ramirez, Patrick Wilson, yeah. Michael Barres, yeah. Adrian Lennox. Yeah. You know, you know Michael Barres is in the Cher show. I know. You grew up knowing Cher. Yes. So I want to know who's playing Orfe in the Cher show. He's playing Bob Mackie. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can play Orphan. I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> they cut my part. <laughs> <laughs> fascinating Rhythm was a, a fascinating flop. It was a Gershwin review. What is it like to start a flop? I didn't know better. Right. So for me, I was like, I was just really upset that I didn't get to go to work and hang out with these wonderful people every day. And it was a really fun show. And it was also ahead of its time. Maybe not fully realized. I remember it was very uh, modern versions of Gershwin songs. Like it was like very pop, modern, modern pop versions. takes on Gershwin and music. And people were not ready yeah. for that right. at all. You know, over the years I've heard you talk a lot about sort of the music industry and you were, you were kind of like, a, is it fair to say a victim of the music industry? Do you feel that way? I was a casualty. Casualty. I yes. don't know that I was a victim. I don't think you're a victim of anything. I don't think That's so either. And I would. I don't think I'd ever be able to even try to pretend I was. Right. Even if I have ever been a victim, I'm not going to be able to sell that right. at all. But I was a definite casualty, and it hurt, and it still hurts, and I still. That's what I was going to ask. It feels like it does still. Absolutely. It, yeah. I, I and I sometimes realize I'm wearing it like a really ugly winter coat, and I don't mean to, but huh. I miss the music industry. Yeah. Uh, I miss being on a trajectory to be a pop star. Right. Uh, that is really all I ever, ever dreamed about or envisioned for myself from the time I was six years old mm. on to the point where I got a big fat record deal, yeah. which, you know, is, is, is impossible, you mm -hmm. know? And I miss it a lot. And I think that because, you know, as an adult now, I know what youth is wasted on the young means because had I not been so young, mm -hmm. or had I had an intense momager, you know, right. or if someone was really looking out for the two of us, Mike right. Moore, my partner, we were very young, we were very green, and mm -hmm. we were street smart New York kids. So, right. like, we came with somewhat of an advantage. But had we known better, it would have worked out. But everybody that could have done wrong by us, everything that could have gone wrong, everybody that could have taken gross and egregious advantage of us did. And you're kind of left there with a gigantic omelet on your head, mm. you know? So you're immediately, you're, you're too young to know better and you're immediately kind of labeled a failure. So right. kind of, I've spent the last umpteen years getting out of that mm. failure mode. And yeah. I, I talk to my castmates about this all the time and I, we're very close. The Pretty Woman cast is, is phenomenal and we're really tight. They're like, but you're, you, you, you're this and you're that. And I'm like, yeah, I, I just, you know, inherently when it's early and it Im imprints on you, you feel like you have colossally bombed, mm. you know? And then there's the logic that comes with growing up and becoming mm. smarter and wiser as you get older. 
I think to myself, look, the people that I grew up worshiping and loving and wanting to be in the music yeah. business because of Prince, Whitney Houston, mm. Michael Jackson, they're gone. They're mm. not here on this earth anymore. Mm. And so in my heart, of course, I would like to think I'd be on my 20th studio album with right. a shelf full of Grammys and American Music Awards and Billboard right. Awards. And, you know, I'm writing for this person now and I'm sitting in the studio and calling the shots or doing something Maybe like that. Maybe writing a Broadway musical. Right. Just, <laughs> just literally was going to say doing what Brian Adams and right. Jim Valance are doing right, right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. You're behind the scenes going, or Cindy Lauper. Okay, now I'm doing a musical, right, you know, because right. I've got those chops, yeah. you know? You don't know that that's how it would have turned out. Right. Because it could have been that ideally sure in my version of the story it would be that right or I could have peaked at 25 mm. and been begging people to buy my old merchandise at a convention right now to pay my rent because I've seen that happen yeah. I came up with a lot of people who were very mm -hmm. very successful had huge hits one hits you know mm -hmm. uh, not lost hits but big hits right. and they're literally begging people to buy their memorabilia online yeah. you know what I'm saying so I feel like in my most lucid moments where I'm not feeling bad for myself about it, I'm really freaking glad I didn't peak at 25 mm -hmm. because we're older a lot longer than we are young. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, I guess I'm all right. If I had met Brian Adams 15 years ago, maybe right. he could have been like, I'm gonna drag you into the studio and make a CD with right. you. I didn't, again, ahead of my time, right. as far as like the image and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And the guy who signed me wound up signing me Many times thereafter, and they were big successes. Mm. You know, they don't know that they were modeled after me. And of course, it's taken me a long time to actually admit this because people think you're being a jerk. Right. At, you know, saying, oh, that was me and that was my style. It was. When you put someone in the same clothes that you were in and use the same photographers, the same designers, the yeah. same makeup people, the same hair people, the same choreographers, and, you know, give the same kind of template of the like blue eyed soul voice. Well, it's very easy to dismiss someone's story if you weren't there to witness it. Exactly, and God forbid there wasn't social media then. So you right. can't prove it because there aren't right. 500 videos on YouTube of me doing that. Right. But then when someone that came up after me is in a picture and 70 people send me, is that you and it's not me? Mm. Then I know I'm not wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, 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 I do have a certain longing and a mm -hmm. regret and like a hole here yeah. about it. but. I think I'm doing okay. Is there a tip you can give people or, you know, something? I, I think you have to really just keep forging ahead. You have to never, you know, I very rarely feel sorry for myself to the point where it keeps me locked in my cocoon. Right, and I yeah. can't. I'm always forging. I do not let the grass yeah, grow yeah. under my feet. I don't. People, human beings are very hard on themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm harder on me than anyone could possibly ever be, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. But I realize that I still get to sing for a living mm. for live audiences. Right. And that is- And the audiences um, go crazy. Go, yeah. now, and, now and then, unless it's a Wednesday matinee. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I get to, and I get to be around a lot of creative, beautiful, yep. fabulous, energetic uh -huh. people. And I get to meet new people all the time. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really big blessing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, uh, you know, I can't be that down on myself. And again, very rarely do I even allow myself to go there, mm -hmm. but I get to sing for a living. Yeah. Still doesn't suck. Yeah. You know. No, and sing amazingly. Oh my God. He's We're my publicist, in case you didn't know. Paul Ta Wontorek is also my I'm publicist. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I like being a fan. Thank you. Uh, I, I loved having you here again. It's been too long since. How We're long? out of time. You have to come back again. I mean, how long has it been since I was on it's show? It's been people? like seven years ish. <laughs> in my humble opinion, we both look better. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. we have good lighting now. Now we have yes. good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Woo! Happy opening. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back. Can't we love wait. having Thank you on you Broadway. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I love, having love you being here. here. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>